My name is Julianne Richardson. I'm the manager of the Legal Deposit Program here at Library and Archives Canada. And I'm here with my colleague, Arlene Wetter. She is the superhero team lead of our digital acquisitions team. Um, and we're here to share with you today our digital acquisitions workflows and how we use uh, publisher supplied metadata here at LAC. So, next. Next slide, please. Joel. Is ever can everyone just see the first slide? No, I can I I only see the first we're still on the first slide. Uh, it's a what we see right now is March three. If we can go back two slides. Okay. It's okay. If you, I can sort of remember the presentation. So if we're on slide two. What we see right now is Library and Archives Canada, who we are, guardian of the past. Is that what you'd like us to see? All right, yes. Okay, we can do this. All right, so um, Library and Archives Canada. So the National Archives and the National Library of Canada were merged under the LAC Act of 2004, creating one, um, one memory institution for all of Canada. As a memory institution, our mandate is very large, um, but for today we'll focus on the bit about the acquisition, preservation, and uh, making accessible Canada's documentary heritage. Um, Documentary heritage is the documentary and creative output of Canadians past, present and future. It includes published and non-published documents, both private and public, uh, music, film, the web. In June of this year, Library and Archives Canada unveiled its Vision 2030 strategic plan, which defines um, what we want to accomplish by 2030 or 2030. It feels so weird to say that and how we can achieve it. It provides the necessary guidance to better meet our mandate. I want to highlight three of its guiding principles. So one, we want to make our collections better known and better accessible. Uh, we want to continuing acquiring collections that reflect, oh, there we go, um, a diverse and inclusive society. And we want to work more with our partners in the community and in around the world. In the slide here, you can see this is our new preservation building in Gatineau. And despite what it looks like, we are not the Borg and we will not assimilate you. We in quite the opposite, in fact. So next slide, please. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so our authority to collect. A quick word before I continue, acquiring, preser preserving, and making a collection accessible is a really broad topic. And so we are going to just today focus on the acquisitions and specifically the acquisitions of published materials such as monographs, um, music scores, and federal publications. So first, how does LAC go about growing its collections? Well, there's many different ways. We, uh, we have donations, we do some purchases, and we have various programs such as the Thesis Canada program. Um, but by large, we acquire our collection through the legislative mechanism of legal deposit. So uh, Section 10 of the LAC Act requires all publishers and self-publishers who um, publish a document, as in make it available to, to the public, um, they must deposit copies with Library and Archives Canada. Um, the regulations will also, uh, we don't need to go into them, but here's where you'll find the exclusions such as things, um, coloring books with no text, drafts, um, posters, these are not actively um, acquired by LAC. Next. Okay. 
Um, and this is a really, really quick slide. Before we move on, I just wanted to quickly show you a part of a logbook that was kept in legal in the legal deposit section at LAC way before we had computers. So on March 31st, 1959, LAC acquired seven publications and we were able to type them all in. They're all in the, the well, they're in the card catalog. Um, can you guess how many were received on March 31st, 2022? Uh, we received 228 items. So we've come a long way since then. Next. All right. So like most everything, um, documentary heritage has evolved alongside digital technology. Um, in the past, we had simple print monographs, magazines, uh, CDs, records. These were all tangible items. Now we have the digital versions of all of these, plus much, much more. We have blogs and podcasts, social media, uh, geodata. And in order to both ensure the continuity in and to ensure an accurate representation of Canadians in the collection, LAC is prioritizing its digital capacity. Um, but were we up to it? Did our systems and workflows evolve alongside the digital as well? Next, please. Um, so the impact of digital on the publishing industry is keenly felt by LAC. Self-publishing is now easier to accomplish. Um, various platforms exist, such as Amazon, Blurb.com, draft to digital Instagram, Spark, Lulu.com, that basically allow anybody to self-publish their, their works. Now, it's not to say that publishing companies don't have a place, um, but it, is, it, it just means it's easier to do now. Um, as well, publishers are now releasing digital formats alongside with print ones, and often a digital format will come out long after the print has been published. Well, since 2007, the digital copy also has to be deposited with LAC. So these two things really increase the number of publications that are deposited with LAC, which means that there's a lot more work to do. Um, and finally, the dynamic nature of the digital also means that staff has to spend more time with each one determining um, whether it's subject to legal deposit, whether it's a draft or a final copy, and this happens a lot, uh, whether it's readable, whether it contains the proper metadata, whether it's a true publication, in a sense that a publication available to Canadians is subject to legal deposit. But if it's a book of poems you put together for your family and only your family, then that's not something that we would collect. Um, next slide. Mm -hmm. So with all that, how is LAC meeting this challenge? Well, we're upgrading our systems and we're trying to find efficiencies in our workflows. As you'll see in the next slide, our system has uh, was ge several generations out of date. Um, but beyond upgrading the, the digital system, uh, we try to find efficiencies in our workflows. So some of the things we did was we re-engaged with our partners, such as publishers, universities, and the depository services. We are now engaging with communities to ensure that our collection truly reflects the diverse and inclusive society that is can Canada. And we're refusing to reinvent the wheel. I mean, we're not the first to do this. So we are talking to other national libraries, to other memory institution, academic libraries. What are they doing? What systems are they using? What approach are they using? What, and what can we and what can we learn from that? What can we reuse from that? Next slide. Mm -hmm. So here is a, um, a brief timeline of uh, LAC and its digital challenges or yeah, the digital challenges. So in 1994, we implemented our very first digital ingest system, aptly called EPPS or the Electronic Pilot Project System, which must be the longest project pilot project ever since it's still in, in use today, but is, is due to sunset at the end of March, 2023. We then have early attempts at the digitization ingestions of materials from within our own collections, such as the PS8000 collection of early 20th century digitized Canadiana. Uh, then came our web harvesting program, which began in 2004 and is now a big success. The program collects the Canadian web and currently sits at over 100 terabytes. Um, 
can anybody hazard a, uh, hazard a guess at how many selfies it contains? It contains over 50 million selfies. Um, 2004 also saw the early attempts at, our the at ingesting electronic feces. Um, and then here we are in 2022, fully embedded in the development of our workflows within our digital asset management system. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. So in the interest of time, because I know I am running above my time, um, I'm going to speed this up. Earlier I spoke of lack meeting the digital challenges by upgrading our systems. Um, so check, we did that. And looking at our processes to find efficiencies, my colleague Arlene will touch on those. Next. Mm -hmm. So um, quickly, um, we currently have three up and running workflows within our dams. Um, so the first one is the Thesis Canada program. That was established in 1965 to acquire and preserve the master's and doctoral thesis of um, by students from Canadian universities, which are not subject to legal deposit. Um, in 65, it started with 12 universities, and now we hold the works of over 60 universities. And we currently have over 25 universities participating in the new workflows. Uh, the digital models workflows was launched in December 2021, and we currently have over 6,000 new titles with over 1,000 um, distinct publishers participating. Um, we have also just recently completed the workflows for federal monographs and currently have over uh, 5,000 new titles. So now I will pass the floor to Arlene, who will go into detail about the acquisition workflows and how we are using publisher supplied metadata to create efficiencies in our process. Thanks, Julianne. Um, okay. Okay, that worked. <laughs> Um, so generally, we've moved from using custom-built systems uh, to commercial systems for reasons that are widely recognized, um, like the benefits of regular updates and technical support from vendors. Is my mic on? Is, I'm good. <laughs> um, newly acquired digital publications uh, and or records now move through at least uh, three systems at LAC. First, we've automated our ingest workflows with a managed file transfer application called Go Anywhere MFT. In Go Anywhere, we assemble the submission information packages and send them to Preservica. Preservica is a commercial preservation platform that we acquired a few years ago through uh, a DAMS procurement process. We store our newly acquired digital publications in Preservica. We also preserve collections on tape. Finally, finally we send the MARC records to Aurora, which is LAC's library catalog, and WorldCat. Digital legal deposit workflows. Um, under our legal deposit mandate, LAC should be acquiring most things published in Canada in both physical and digital formats. That is a lot of stuff. And with respect to digital, we needed to find a way to be more efficient. We launched new submission forms last year, which ask for more data from publishers. This way, what we receive in the forms can be transformed into viable bibliographic records through, through an automated process. The online submission forms are generally used by self-publishers, by associations, and by a few smaller trade publishers. We don't expect large trade publishers to fill out these forms, given that they already have metadata in the form of Onyx records that they can submit. The British Library shared an Onyx to mark XSLT with us, and we've adapted it for, for LAC. And we plan to launch this, this workflow in the coming months so that we can um, then begin to acquire metadata and digital publications from major Canadian publishers at a larger scale. Another active workflow using our new systems is the acquisition of theses and dissertations for the Theses Canada program. Generally, we harvest the files and metadata from the university's institutional repository. Setting up the harvest requires a lot of back and forth communication with the universities and the universities do a lot of work to get their ETDMS data and the links to the files ready for harvesting. The benefit is that we can acquire in batches of tens of thousands of theses at a time and our metadata transformations generate records that are good enough for the library catalog. In addition to the large scale harvesting, we recently introduced a single thesis upload form which small universities without a repository can use to submit theses. 
Our newest batch acquisitions workflow is for federal publications. We launched this workflow in the spring of 2022. Every week, approximately 200 monographs are published on the weekly acquisitions list, which is the present day incarnation of the Gov Government's Depository Services Program, or DSP list. DSP also produces MARC records for each title. Our new automated workflow is scheduled to acquire the MARC records, download the publications, and submit it all to Preservica every week. With DSP's cooperation and support, we automatically customize uh, and enrich their MARC data and we upload those records to Aurora and WorldCat. For decades, our cataloging teams have selected a good portion of the DSP records to upgrade manually. However, even records not selected for full cataloging by LAC are now described in our catalog, which is a super benefit of this new workflow. We depend a lot on the good quality of the work done by others, by the DSP catalogers, by the universities, by publishers. We give guidance to all when appropriate to try to ensure we have good quality data coming in. Because many of our publication streams begin with data submitted in standard schema, namely ATDMS, MARC, or ONIX, the data from those streams is relatively consistent and stable. For the individual legal deposit submissions in web form coming in from our web forms, there is a lot more variability in the data. So we use the functionality of the web form to enforce data entry standards where we where we can, and when we can't enforce, we suggest with guidance and instructions on uh, data entry. Also, our staff review and edit the data in a custom template in Preservica. We've been really conscious about not making this custom template too complex as we don't want to recreate a cataloging module, but it's an opportunity to verify the information submitted by publishers and to edit some key fields. We also review every title submitted via web form to ensure that it is subject to legal deposit since sometimes we do receive things which are ineligible. <clears throat> Upload to the catalog. So we convert the metadata for all publication streams coming in uh, to Preservica to MODS, uh, to MODS records so that there's a common format for all of the, the records in our repository. An automated workflow selects new records added to Preservica and converts the mods to MARC and spits out a MARC file. So librarians do take a close look at this MARC file before uploading to the catalog. We don't check every record, but we review a few things in MARC edit, and there are some common errors or problems that we look for and fix. We then upload to our catalog using the OCLC data sync collections feature. A final step is a weekly sync back uh, of the records from OCLC to Preservica, uh, where we do the metadata transformation in reverse, mark to mods, and we replace the original mods record uh, in Preservica with a new one that includes the OCLC number. This way we maintain a connection between the digital objects uh, in Preservica with their authoritative description in the catalog. The introduction of these new uh, acquisitions workflows at LAC is a departure from past practices and they've certainly created efficiencies. A single technician processing digital legal deposit submissions can acquire about twice as many titles now. However, the quality will never be as good as manual records created by a cataloger and we regularly discover errors, unanticipated problems. We're now working through questions such as what errors should be fixed, what can we ignore, also, which team is responsible for fixing them? Do we need a new team with a mix of acquisitions and cataloging staff, since this doesn't fall under the umbrella of either team's previous workload? Although we don't pay for our library materials, we do have an acquisitions process to order and receive most publications in the acquisitions module in our ILS so that we can send legal deposit receipts. There's an example of an emailed legal deposit receipt up there to U of A Press. Um, and also run statistical reports on our acquisitions. This is an extra step and it takes additional time. When designing the workflows, we considered uh, not doing this step for all digital publications, but in the end, we decided on a hybrid approach for the ingest processes where a legal deposit receipt is not required, namely the theses harvesting program and the federal publications workflow. Um, we don't do this step. We just keep manual stats in a spreadsheet which is man manageable given the, the nature of those publication streams. But for publications that require a legal deposit receipt, uh, we decided to order and receive in the acquisitions modules so that we can send receipts in the same way we would for analog materials and we can run the same type of stats report as we do for analog. 
So public access to our digital collection is provided through the catalog. We offer two types of public access, open or restricted. Price publications are always restricted access and can only be viewed on site in our Ottawa reference room. In addition to the catalog, LAC has a process to pull all of our records from OCLC into a database, uh, which is used to populate our collection search feature, uh, which is like a federated search of our archival and library collection on our website, as well as the Theses Canada search portal. The Access Online button or full text links lead to a dynamically generated resource landing page, which looks like this. Uh, if it's an open access publication, we have a little bit of metadata uh, pulled in for uh, like a citation at the top from the mods record uh, in Preservica displayed there. Uh, and it lists the files in that title folder. So if it's a multi-file publication, it'll list uh, more than one file. If it's a restricted access publication, uh, you get the on-site only, on access only message. A complete redevelopment of this uh, landing page or um, item display pages in the work plan for the coming year, including perhaps uh, an embedded document viewer in addition to a nice way to display and access serial issues, which we currently don't have. Um, we're often asked by publishers and universities about preservation. How are we ensuring the long-term storage, viability, and accessibility of the digital resources in our published heritage collections? With the acquisition of Preservica, we now benefit from uh, many of the preservation features in that software. Uh, some of them are listed here. We also still do export collections from Preservica uh, onto tape, and we store two copies in tape in our vaults. Finally, um, our next challenge, which we're currently working on, is to develop workflows to accommodate serial publications. Um, new workflows for serial publications. We're looking at how we'll store the metadata for serial issues uh, within Preservica, and that work will need to be aligned with the uh, development work for our new resource landing page. We also need to develop the submission mechanisms for publishers. What types of forms will they use? How will they transfer the files? After serials, we'll turn to digital music. Um, we have the legal deposit mandate at LAC to acquire digital music produced in Canada. We do collect CDs, vinyl records, anything produced for sale in a physical format, um, but a lot of music is distributed now digitally only, and we are very aware of what we're missing out on by not collecting this. Um, it's a daunting challenge, but uh, and given the usual, sorry, given the usual constraints uh, of time and resources, um, <clears throat> it's a challenge, but we are happy with the progress we've made so far, and we'll continue to do our best to acquire more of Canada's digital published heritage. The end. Hang out. Yeah. Just a second. Okay. Thank you very much, Julianne and uh, Arlene. I think I'll take a moment just to thank the tech crew that's running the show here, too, for having done such a great job on flexibly, very flexibly having navigated that. And my intent isn't to keep us long from lunch, but just to see if there were any questions to roll in. I had a quick question to you, Julianne. You mentioned other uh, places not wanting to reinvent the wheel necessarily, but being in touch with other corners. I was wondering if there's other corners of the world that are maybe seeing, like have a standard of, of doing things. You talked about referring to other institutions that might be going through processes. And if, if there's any place in the globe that seemed to be getting this right for either of you. Germany, um, that's, a that's a loaded question. Uh, I think a lot, a lot of the national libraries and a lot of academic libraries, they're all on the path to doing some of this. Um, I know the British Library, um, they are a bit more advanced than us. And in fact, we, um, they were kind enough to let, uh, give us, and I'm going to get this wrong, this is more of an Arlene question, but the, the, the metadata trans, or the metadata walk throughs or the yeah the walkthroughs for some of the metadata in in the system they were um happy to share that so we were able to reuse that um we you know we often talk to uh bnq um that's the uh, bibliothèque nationale du québec about workflows we share best practices we 
Um, we try to help each other out. Um, if you're looking for someone who's a little bit more advanced, I would have a look at the um, the National Library of Australia. Arlene? Yeah, we're currently looking at Australia's uh, serials uh, workflow. It seems really sophisticated. So that's something we're admiring right now and trying to work through whether we can copy parts of what they do. Mm -hmm. um, we have the question, ETD submissions. ETD submissions provide a URL. Is that downloaded, parsed, stored, or any collections full text searchable? Full text uh, searchable, um, no, not right now. Um, I don't know what you mean by the first part, ETD, uh, the URL downloaded, parsed, stored. Do you, do you mean the, the file itself? or The theses uh, provide a URL. Is that downloaded, parsed, or stored? We definitely do provide access to the university's URL in our records, if, if that's, and then also a URL in the record to a copy on, on our own servers or in, in Preservica. I think it means if the ETD submission provides a URL, like an original URL, along with it, if it in case it's somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 